Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back. Mm. Now we will go to the uh, mm, formation of uh, NOx. Okay. Now, as we discussed, uh, of course, we need to understand ignition delay, but also because that is very, very critical in determining whether in a given combustor you will have reactions or not at all, whether that given combustor that you have designed, whether there is sufficient flow residence time scale for your reaction to happen. Of course, your flow residence time scale has to be uh, much bigger than the uh, chemical uh, time scales and the chemical time scale is characterized by the ignition delay time scale. Of course, uh, you have to guarantee that. So, uh, it is important to understand where does the ignition delay come from and where is your um, uh, initiation and uh, present branching and heat release reaction come from. But at the same time, you have to design a combustor of an aero engine in such a way that um, it uh, produces very little emission in terms of the there is very little emission of pollutants and one of the biggest pollutant is NOx which is NO and uh, NO2 which is represented in general by NOx X4 is equal to 1 or X equal to 2 and also there is nitrous oxide in 2O. Okay, now, these are very bad because it cre creates smog and uh, uh, it is really very unhealthy and uh, we need to understand the reaction mechanisms that gives rise to this. Now, before we go into this, there are essentially three, um, uh, three uh, mechanisms, um, there are essentially three mechanisms of NOx uh, formation. One is uh, called the Zeldovich mechanism or the formation of thermal NOx. The second is the prompt NOx and the third is the uh, nitrous N2O root. So, using this three we can describe essentially uh, the formation of NOx uh, in a very comprehensive manner. So, what is the first route which is the most important as discovered by Zeldovich what is thermal NOx. This is called the uh, 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 it is obtained by the Zeldovich uh, mechanism. So, uh, what it says is that the first the most important step which is the first step is when N2 is attacked by an oxygen atom and it forms NO and N, N atom. Okay. Now, this is the most important thing and uh, then the N atom can react with oxygen to form NO and O and then this uh, N and OH can essentially form um, NO and H. All right. So, uh, for the first reaction is the most important reaction where N2O reaction is strongly temperature sensitive and it is also the rate limiting mechanism because it is very difficult to break the NN bond and the NN bond can be broken by an oxygen uh, only at very high temperatures. Okay. And uh, as a result this mechanism is uh, this, this path is important only at very high temperature of 1800 Kelvin and it is this the thermal NOx is mainly the product or NOx that is formed in the product. But then it was found that uh, and of course, we see that there is no much dependence of oxygen because it uh, depends on the oxygen radical as such. Okay. But then it was found that, uh, that NOx is also formed in colder part of the flame and it does not need always high temperature to be formed and that leads to the discovery of this prompt NOx mechanism by Fenimore. And this uh, reaction between essentially it is a reaction between nitrogen and hydrocarbon radicals and it uh, follows this that N2 essentially reacts with CH to form this NCN uh, molecule an H atom and then it goes through this NCN essentially goes uh, through a different kind of uh, uh, NCN then essentially uh, uh, also uh, this N2 and CH2 also can form HCN and NH and this HCH and NH this can form uh, can uh, go through different kind of steps it can be attacked by oxygen. But the most important thing is that all this lead to the formation of N 
Uh, why the formation of N is important? Because once N is formed, uh, you can uh, basically it reacts, you can react with oxygen uh, to form NO plus O or it can react with oxygen OH to form NO plus OH. So, the formation of N is the most challenging part. Uh, it can either happen through the prompt NOx mechanism or it can happen through the thermal NOx me mechanism where it where N2 the thermal NOx if you remember there is N2 plus O goes to mm, um, um, uh, N2 plus O goes to uh, um, NO um, uh, plus um, uh, N. Yes, so uh, N2 plus O essentially goes to NO plus N. So, this was uh, the thermal NOx uh, mechanism that we just discussed. Now, also uh, you see that this also uh, this prompt NOx mechanism is also promoted with increase in temperature and um, also it needs uh, the presence of the hydrocarbon molecule actually. Now, the N2 route uh, that we discussed is essentially this uh, is a third body reaction th uh, three body reaction where N2 plus oxygen atom can react in uh, after being attacked by or uh, can be uh, when a third body also comes in and this N2O is formed, this N2O then can react with NO to form two molecules of NO. So, this is the other mechanism by which this is uh, formed. Mm, uh, now, control of NO, I will not go into this, there can be different methods by which NO can be controlled. It can be done by uh, exhaust gas recirculation uh, and it can be done to promote uh, uh, mixing as in HCCI engines where uh, of course, we can do go to a premixed uh, flame mode as we will see that when the temperature can be reduced at least then the thermal NOx can be reduced and then we can use water injection uh, because uh, the water uh, uh, can uh, uh, this uh, the reduce uh, temperature and produce O atoms and uh, the O atom can be taken to form uh, which can which is essentially uh, this O atom that is in present in the in uh, this uh, reaction mechanisms that is formed essentially goes and attacks the N2 to form uh, the thermal NOx. So, if you can take away this O atom by by reaction with water to form 2 H you basically cut off this thermal NOx mechanism. Also you can do stage burning fuel rich followed by fuel lean and there are different other uh, process by which uh, reborn um, cell serif catalytic reduction and rapid reduction of NOx etcetera. Uh, these are the methods by which NOx is reduced. Now, next pollution formation is essentially this uh, soot formation. Uh, this as you know this uh, hydrocarbon uh, combustion uh, when it happens in rich flames, uh, it gives rise to this particulate uh, carbon or soot. Uh, here you can see that uh, this uh, from this aircraft engine this amount of soot is coming. Um, of course, nowadays aircraft engines have improved and this amount of soot is rare, but still uh, we uh, need to understand that the, this there is uh, still substantial soot being formed because in many aircraft engine combustion happens in non premix mode and uh, we need to understand the mechanism by which this soot is formed. So, this yellow luminescence that you see is essentially caused by the thermal reduction of soot in flames or thermal radiation of essentially the soot in flames. Soot are essentially black bodies and it radiates over a large range of, uh, 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 of the uh, over a huge range of the visible spectrum and uh, it gives out this uh, uh, yellow color that we see. Okay. Now, soot is uh, not an uniquely defined uh, chemical substance and it is mainly composed of carbon, but it also contains some amount of hydrogen and the uh, uh, atomic C to H ratio is about 8 is to 1 and the mass density of soot is about uh, 2 grams per cubic centimeter. Uh, now, why does uh, soot is formed? Uh, the soot is uh, essentially uh, you will see that uh, soot is a agglomeration of large number of uh, uh, like uh, carbon small carbon particles and these carbon particles are uh, essentially composed of uh, several thousands of carbon atoms and these carbon atoms can also have different kind of very layered kind of structures um, which is a uh, which are and this uh, this uh, understanding and, uh, and the mechanism by which soot formation and uh, the structures of soot is an active research area and combustion currently. And uh, uh, as we discussed this chain like aggregates of spherical particles are formed and they contain uh, several thousands uh, hundred thousands of uh, carbon atoms and diameters of these particles are from 20 to 50 nanometer. And uh, the mechanism of soot formation, the, uh, there are two steps essentially or there are two it can be subdivided into two sets. The most important thing is that the one of the most important soot precursor is uh, acetylene. So, acetylene essentially you will see that acetylene the C2H2 uh, can go to different uh, go through all these steps and essentially uh, the it leads to this uh, formation of this cyclic aromatic. Um, a compound and then it leads to benzene. 
this uh, benzene formation pathway is a very important thing. So, acetylene whenever there is acetylene there are this uh, through all these steps it can go to formation of, of benzene. I will not go into the details of the steps here. And then um, there is also something called precursor to suit which is called poly aromatic hydrocarbons mm, and uh, so fuel rich combustion has produces acetylene and then acetylene leads to polymerization and formation of this poly aromatic hydrocarbons which is just we discussed. So, whenever there is acetylene um, whenever there is fuel rich combustion it essentially leads to formation of acetylene molecules and acetylene molecules leads to this formation of this uh, benzene rings uh, and uh, what happens as that essentially the methylene radicals from burn burning long chain aliphatic fuels due to reaction between C2H2 and O atom and directly related to acetylene. And uh, uh, also in uh, fuel rich conditions methane or natural gas flames are methylene radicals produced from direct reaction between CH3 and OH. Mm, that is also the thing and then how does the aromatic grow to form soots because the soot is not essentially a benzene uh, ring and uh, that is governed by this Hakka mechanism which is called hydrogen abstraction by C2H2 addition uh, the Hakka mechanism. So, the thing is that whenever there is a so we have seen that um, acetylene leads to the formation of this uh, benzene uh, uh, molecule and then this benzene molecule can be there can be a hydrogen abstraction uh, 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 from this benzene uh, molecule and then we have this free radical and this uh, this uh, this un we essentially can have an unpaired electron and this unpaired electron can latch onto an acetylene. And now when you know that uh, whenever there is an acetylene there is also a mechanism by which it can form this benzene ring. So, this benzene ring forms uh, latches onto the another benzene ring and so on and so forth and you can see by this mechanism um, by this hydrogen abstraction from this benzene ring and then then uh, uh, latching onto that uh, uh, position of this uh, unpaired electron by the acetylene essentially leads to growth of this uh, benzene ring side by side and that is the hydrogen abstraction or uh, by C2H by acetylene or the Hakka mechanism of formation of poly aromatic hydrocarbon formation and these are essentially the soot precursor that is being formed. Now, uh, so this is this thing uh, that uh, um, uh, that is uh, important in the formation of soot and of course, uh, it can uh, depending on the neighboring ring structure as you see that this newly formed ring can either um, can grow, grow radially into acetylene or it can grow to uh, it can be activated through hydrogen abstraction reaction to produce a poly aromatic hydrocarbon radical species. So, this is the thing uh, that we talked about right now that uh, if we have a uh, benzene uh, benzene molecule and the benzene molecule can arise from uh, itself from acetylene and uh, then uh, also it can uh, 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 grow to another path uh, where it can form another uh, alternative uh, poly aromatic hydrocarbon growth formation in which you have this kind of uh, shapes instead of this side by side shapes that we just uh, discuss. So, both of these uh, different structures can be formed by, uh, by, by from a benzene ring and then uh, the two different variants of the Hakka mechanism. So, I will not uh, go into the details in this one. So, now on the uh, on the final topic of uh, of uh, of this uh, oxidation mechanism of fuels, we would like to discuss uh, mechanism reduction. Now, uh, uh, of course, you have seen the you have by now understood the importance of detailed reactions then we have understood that uh, to predict uh, important uh, quantities like ignition delay etcetera of uh, practical fuels uh, like uh, n dodec n uh, which is an aviation uh, turbine fuel um, which is essentially representation representative of an aviation turbine fuel or jet a. Um, uh, we need a detailed reaction mechanism because it involves all these different steps you need to understand how this uh, fuel molecule breaks down. Uh, how it can uh, lead to this chain branching reactions and then how it can essentially compete with this other molecule other reactions and then when it those reactions can go down other reactions can go up and these leads to different kind of uh, uh, complicated uh, um, uh, things uh, or observations like ignition delay etcetera. Okay. So, uh, to predict this of course, we need detailed mechanisms, but then the problem is that the detailed mechanisms are very large. Okay. It can range as we see it can range from 10 to 10,000 species and it can range from 10 to 10 to the power 4 reactions that is uh, there can be 10 to 1000 species. For example, the smallest reaction mechanism uh, detailed reaction mechanism that we have seen is that of hydrogen which involves 9 reactions uh, 9 species 19 reactions and uh, the large ones for example, n dode can, um, can involve very very large number of molecules uh, very very large number of species and very very large number of reactions. 
of the order of 1000 species and uh, 10000 reactions and the, the the reactions and species are essentially related by this uh, K2O5N and in this diagram um, if we plot uh, species on the x axis and number of reactions on the y axis you see that uh, that um, well for all things uh, here we see that uh, this is um, uh, GRI 1.2 and this methane air mechanism um, that involves about say uh, 20, 30 about 30, 40 species and more than uh, uh, 120 reactions. Um, whereas uh, this uh, C16 or this uh, for example, the C12 uh, which we are discussing this uh, end dodecan that involves about the more about 1000 uh, species and about uh, 9000 reactions. Okay. Uh, so, uh, of course, uh, if you want to do a detailed uh, uh, CFD, if you want to um, uh, if you want to solve for uh, or want to predict uh, or want to validate um, a combustion inside a practical engine, one cannot use uh, so many species actually in a practical uh, CFD code. Um, one cannot use uh, 1000 species and one cannot use uh, 9000 reactions if you want to solve uh, for combustion of uh, jet fuels. So, or even which is not even jet fuel, but the representative of the jet fuel which is endodecan. So, what you do is that uh, um, of course, uh, it computes with the flow description and uh, it limits the accuracy of both and uh, in, in here uh, this detailed reactions inhibits the feasibility of computing even for phenomena of a really large, even for simple phenomena like computing ignition delay etcetera you have a um, this is this becomes uh, really too large um, and uh, uh, even for a simple phenomena like ignition delay and forget about uh, computing for detailed um, uh, turbulent combustion uh, you know in an actual engine okay so we need essentially simplified mechanism with uh, minimal loss of comprehensiveness and uh, the dependence of temperature pressure and phenomena uh, concentration of phenomena and it should be accurate it should be able to predict things like ignition delay uh, laminar flame speed um, extinction strain rate we'll see what these are essentially but you know already what is ignition delay it should be able to predict ignition delay at least uh, to a reasonably accuracy and uh, so these are the requirements so this is the once again uh, the detailed um, uh, uh, so this uh, this uh, uh, diagram um, uh, proposed by Lu and uh, Tian Feng Lu and uh, Professor C K Law and uh, um, you see that uh, once again uh, it can range from this to this uh, um, uh, a very large number of species can be get involved as the complexity of the fuel increases uh, C eight C twelve C sixteen uh, this sort of things. So, uh, mechanism reduction the requirement of a comprehensive re mechanism is that it must be accurate and it must be able to reliably describe the combustion phenomena and it, it has to describe all kinds of combustion phenomena over possible ranges of thermodynamic parameters that is T temperature pressure and Y species mass fractions. The three factors that are responsible for mechanism reduction are essentially um, computational power and stiff system of equations because you see all this uh, Ea by Rt with this reaction rate is uh, different kinds of Es gives the different time scales for reactions. So, that makes this uh, oh, this uh, differential equations of uh, this uh, this things mm, uh, species quite uh, uh, quite stiff system and it is complicated and we have to basically identify the dominant species and the pathways and the coupling between the reactant reactions and the species. Okay. Uh, now, uh, for example, uh, the was of course, the most simple reaction one can think of is the one step this is CH4 uh, CO2 plus H2O. Now, of course, you see that uh, we have already known by now that uh, CH4 does not go to CO2 in one step and even CO2 cannot be formed in one step even from CO. So, we need to have a CO in um, there is the CO oxidation is of course, the most important uh, reaction in uh, one of the most important reactions in hydrocarbon combustion because that is the key step where heat is released. So, it is natural to introduce CO into the reaction, but of course, these are not actual uh, reactions that happen these are just lumped the, the, the these are just uh, uh, adding some more details onto our global reactions so by including one step species so of course we can here we include the three steps where we again include now hydrogen because hydrogen is also an important step uh, that is formed and then we can have uh, uh, once again an approximate uh, reaction where we have a detailed uh, uh, alkane where a complicated alkane of CMH to M and we can have um, the which breaks down into basically ethylene and then this ethylene 
reacts to with oxygen to form the CO and H2 and then CO goes to form CO2 and a hydrogen is oxidized to form water. Of course, as you know that none of these reactions actually happen like this, but these just adds little more uh, details into a uh, one step reaction mechanism ok. And it considers this important species into important intermediates like CO and H2. But of course, uh, to detail to describe this you in details you would need a uh, uh, few thousands of um, thousands of species and thousands of reactions if same is large and so this is a trade off essentially. So, the idea is that that you only consider uh, this was but this was like done in an ad hoc manner ok. So, we think that uh, that CO is important we think that H 2 O is important we think that ethylene is important. So, that is why these have been done in an ad hoc manner, but to do it systematically we can consider this uh, we can consider elimination of unimportant species by using this directed relation graph or the DRG ok. And this uh, this can be also done by lumping that is uh, by applying quasi steady state species and this partial equilibrium assumptions mm, which has gone also by, by considering similar diffusivities. So, the theories of mechanism reductions um, if you see that there are like uh, detailed uh, mechanism uh, to skeletal uh, mechanism reduction has been uh, has been in uh, mm, mm, people have been active in this area for quite some time. This is the main reason because people realize that on one hand if you use one step global reaction mechanism then you get erroneous results mm, you cannot predict many things. On the other hand if you, you if you want to use the complete detailed reaction mechanism you get uh, you, you run out of computing power and you run out of memory. So, the we in people try to find out methods by which um, a detailed to skeletal mechanisms can be formed uh, at least by several of these techniques like sensitivity and Jacobian analysis detailed reaction and computational singular perturbation called CSP and directed relation graph uh, these things. So, we will just uh, uh, and then subsequent you, you can reduce by employing partial equilibrium assumption and QSQ quasi steady species uh, um, um, concepts. So, what is DRG directed relation graph? So, we think that uh, we uh, consider the uh, the reaction a detailed reaction uh, we represent the species by this uh, uh, by this alphabets a b c d and if the species a and b are reacting we produce a, we make an edge between them. So, with a directed edge that is a goes to b if it is like that ok and uh, if it is if there is if in the reaction between a and b. Uh, if there is at all any reaction between A and B then we produce an H. For example, in this reaction mechanism uh, A reacts uh, is A in the reaction uh, somehow A and B are react uh, there is some reaction happening between A and B. Mm, uh, there is uh, some reaction happening between B and uh, C and D uh, C and B it can be that C is forming into B and uh, A, yeah, A is forming into B and uh, also this there can be some reaction between D and B as the, and as a result they are related. The uh, here it suggests that the B and D are mm, uh, are very strongly related it is a very important reaction because of certain reasons and um, as which is represented by the width of this arrow. Of course, there is no connection between A and E and as, as a result there is no connect there is no arrow between A and E also, but there is E and F are being connected to each other ok. So, the idea is that uh, that the it can be quantified the by defining this uh, by this uh, uh, relative error parameter which is the summation over k equal to 1 to uh, k if you remember the detailed reaction um, uh, 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 scheme uh, for uh, the kth reaction. Uh, uh, it was something like this summation i is equal to 1 to n for the kth reaction we could have written like this. So, for the A uh, this was a generalized uh, representation. So, A is a stoichiometric coefficient omega is a reaction rate constant and uh, this parameter uh, mm, uh, we will see that uh, how this delta is defined. Um,
this delta is defined that if uh, this is basically is equal to 1 if there is a kth elementary reaction involves species B and it involves 0 otherwise. So, you see that this numerator contains this summation from k is equal to 1 to k which is k is a reaction number. So, it considers all re possible reactions in which uh, A and B can be involved and this is the stoichiometric coefficient of A in the reaction k. It is the reaction rate of k uh, and this is the de delta parameter which is defined here and on the denominator we have essentially the stoichiometric uh, coefficient of A um, and times the reaction rate of k. Okay. So, um, essentially you see that if all involved reaction uh, if, uh, if all involved uh, of uh, reactions of A involves uh, uh, involves a B then it becomes um, then this parameter essentially becomes 1 and this B R B is equal to 1 okay, in the extreme limit. Uh, on the other hand if none of the reactions involves B then it becomes 0. So, this parameter essentially ranges between 1 and 0 or between 0 and 1. Okay. So, uh, basically this tells you that if you remove uh, if you remove uh, uh, the species B that what amount of error you will induce. Okay. So, if we if this reaction um, if the reaction between R A uh, between A and B if B is participating in all reactions uh, involving A. Uh, then, then of course, uh, it will uh, introduce a huge error. But if this is not part of participating in many, very many reactions involving A, then the amount of error introduced will be small. Okay, that is what this is saying. And uh, using that, uh, we can essentially uh, compute uh, this RAB for different parameters. And this is how it looks like that. Uh, this is the threshold value. We can bas basically then set a threshold of uh, threshold of RAB that we can say that our we will want to make a reaction mechanism in which we will consider all of a species which has a threshold we, which will involve reactions between um, uh, which with, which has a threshold value of greater than uh, uh, which has a threshold value of gr uh, greater than 0.1. Okay. So, uh, and if we see that uh, that if this is a uh, essentially the ethylene air reaction mechanism, we will see that that uh, that uh, this is the how it looks like that and often it happens that this this reactions happen in groups. So, for example, if we set uh, here a threshold to be about uh, 0.2, we will see that uh, the, this will involve a reaction which is 33 species and 205 elementary reactions. On the other hand, if you want to set a very low threshold that is you want to have a very little error, we will need about 70 species and 463 elementary reactions. So, this gives us an idea about how to systematically reduce uh, reactions um, and uh, arrive at smaller reaction uh, mechanisms using um, using this DRG relation and uh, how we can arrive at a um, skeletal mechanism from a fairly complicated and a detailed reaction. So, that is all for this, uh, this uh, um, topic of um, oxidation mechanism of fuels and uh, we will come back uh, next with uh, on to discuss about transport phenomena. So, all these reactions as we have discussed are basically uh, except for one little bit of discussion where we uh, try to identify the difference between the initiation reactions between a homogeneous system versus that in a that in a flame uh, we have not considered the effect of diffusion, but uh, as you know in practical systems uh, diffusion is very important and uh, we need to understand what are the processes that control it and what are the um, uh, parameters of the um, uh, parameters that define uh, diffusion or uh, whether the diffusion will happen fast or slow as such like that. So, that is all for now. Thank you very much.